As we promised you, we said we will talk always about real life examples for any concepts that we learn as we're moving forward in calculus whenever it's possible. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not always possible to give a simplified example for a certain mathematical um, equation or concept. But in this case, we have a fairly simple uh, real life example about limits. How does limits play in real life? Where would I use it? That example is uh, focused on the instantaneous speed as you're driving your vehicle. If you have a certain momentum and you have a rate of change, which is the speed in this case, meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and so on. So if you want to know at a certain time from the moment you moved what is your exact instantaneous speed then in this way the limit could be a solution for you moving to the next slide if we imagined a kid holding a ball at a certain height he want to drop that ball to the ground with a height of edge and he's holding a timer for a time annotated as t then at second one what would be the speed the instantaneous speed of that ball let's say at second one the ball was here you know it's a free falling example in here so the the ball as going down it's increasing its speed so the speed is not constant if this way it's varies as it is moving downward to the earth to make things simplified, we don't want to get, dig into details how we got uh, the linear equations representing the ball motion. Let's say that the you had that ball being dropped for several iterations and you wrote down your time, you wrote down the height, and you came up with the equation representing the motion of the ball. Let's say the motion of the ball was represented as f of t in terms of time in this case instead of f of x equals 16 t plus 16 and that was represented on the cartesian x y axis in this case the graph or the curve for that function was looking this way now to find the instantaneous speed we can easily apply the limit for that function so the instantaneous speed at time equal one second this way we can say the limit of the f of t as t approaches to one which is as the time approaches to one second then the limit of 16 t plus 16 can be represented as 16 multiplied by t squared minus one over t minus one which is a different way to represent that function and if you plug in the one for that function instead of each t you see in the equation then you can see the instantaneous speed for the ball at second one was 32 feet per second so that's a real life example i mean there's a lot of details behind it how to get into h of t equals 16 t squared or f of t equals 16 t plus 16 but we're not getting into that we are just emphasizing here that there is a real life examples for the limits now if we talk about limits and continuity let's discuss about what is the difference between a continuous function and a discontinuous function and how are the limits are handy in that case maybe we touched on that a little bit previously so this is function f and this is function g a simple way to know visually if the function is continuous or no Put your pencil on the curve of that function and keep moving forward as long as you move from the first of the line to the last point of the line without taking out your pencil or pen then that's a continuous function i know that's a a very broad sentence because some functions are going to infinity but for the sake of explaining of explaining but for the sake of explaining the continuity put your pencil on what you see as a curve on the Cartesian if your pin keep going that means that function is continuous same thing here for G G function is continuous well let's go to function P here so you go this way okay he can go forever but I need to jump to this 
uh, other part of the curve then that's a discontinuous function for the q function here same thing discontinuous because you moved from here to here of course it's i mean it's very obvious but we are emphasizing on that function you can see if the function is one continuous line or curve then that's a continuous function if it's a discontinued curve that's completing in a different manner then that's a discontinuous function now some functions are not continuous but have a limit i mean that could be confusing let me get out my camera out of the way to make sure you guys are seeing the full screen so how come a function does not continuous but have a limit i mean continuous function you can have a limit at certain point you approach from the right you approach from the left and life is good but if it's a uh, not continuous function but however have a limit in this case we can see this curve over here it may look like continuous but this circle over here making discontinuity for that function so to find the limit for that you approach it from the right like this way on the x-axis we have two so we're approaching two from the left we're approaching two from the right and that will approach to the answer of four so you can approach from the left and right that's the whole point of limits you don't need to be exact otherwise we don't need limits we are approaching and we get answer the limit as long as you have a solid dot is as high as the whole so in this case you have a dot here what's the limit at this exact dot it's known limit of two equals one no questions asked but if you have this case a discontinuity point or a black hole or a white hole whatever you imagine it or a drain whatever you want so it's discontinuing the way of the curve it's cutting the curve part a from part b of the function r of x in this case so the limit approaches around that discontinuity point if you may call it you say limit of two from the left and limit of two from the right approaches or equals to four same thing here function s of x being drawn on the cartesian in this form then you have a discontinuity point you approach the limit of two from the left and from the right to give you the answer that's close enough to four so you could have a discontinuous or non-continuous curve but have a limit no problem so you don't need to be confused and your brain go um, same as the brain right here in the picture now if we want to define continuity continuity is a function f of x that can be called continuous at point x equal a which a is an integral number in here it can be called continuous at point a or at point x equal a if the following three conditions are satisfied so you can satisfy one and leave the others the three conditions need to be satisfied f of a need to be defined so if you plug in into f of x the number a or the integral number a then this way f of a should be defined you're not dividing over zero or whatever the case then the limit of f of x as x approaches to a should exist and we remembered how we do the limit uh, existence check we will get more details and more practical examples are moving forward by the way then the third condition if f of a should equal the limit of f of x as x equal a so firstly f of a need to be defined secondly the limit of f of x as x approaches to a should exist and thirdly the f of a should equal the limit of f of x as x approaches to a and that's how you check continuity moving forward we will have some examples on how to check the existence of a limit and how to check the continuity of a function um, and we get as much details as we can to make sure you guys are clarified on how to check the limit existence and the continuity